Hey guys, uh, Medify is doing a 50% sale off for Black Friday only. Uh, I think that's a great opportunity to get really discounted lessons. Uh, use the code MEDIGOBBLER, Black Friday only. Uh, good opportunity to get really discounted lessons from me. So what I want to talk about, you know, a concept I brought up in my last uh, Mark Talk video was I felt like, especially within SoCal, I just felt like there were several Mark players that just didn't get simple core concepts about the character. You know, top 20-ish in SoCal, never beyond like rank 10. Uh, and this wasn't just within SoCal, it's like across the board. Like, there's a reason why so many Marts got stuck and only Zane, like, really was like the only new Mart that really broke past like top 10. And I'm trying to do my part to break past the top 10 as well, which some could argue that I am. But regardless of that point, I've kind of realized this because I got a lot of help from uh, outside sources, particularly what really got me to get realize this early on was talking to PPMD a lot, where he would talk about Mark in terms of simplicity and how if he if you follow these rules of Mark, you will probably do well. These are like kind of rules that like. I've kind of realized over time that really worked out well for me and I would recommend to pretty much every other Mart uh, across like a lot of Mart's common matchups where if you follow these rules I think you will do a lot better in these matchups and the first rule against Fox is that you need to be able to edge guard him really well like if you can't edge guard Fox's side B his up B um, you won't win against him because this is not a matchup where you can just juggle or find straight kills or whatever like if you can't edge guard fox that just means you won't kill him and if you can't find these setups of edge guards like you know you can't down throw down tilt you can't go out there fair you can't do basic option coverage if you violate rule number one versus fox you're probably not winning uh the second rule that i want to establish versus fox in addition to edge guarding well is setting up di traps a lot of marts tend to make a mistake of just going for infinite up airs against a fox and then they find fox at like one to twenty percent and they can't kill him and that is a very very common mistake that i see mart players go for in fact for a really long time like because i had trouble with marthritis in this matchup i just didn't even go for like combo strings because i thought it was worthless but that was before i found out about weak up airs and going for pivot setups, pivot tipper setups, and mixing up a fair and up B, you know, you might have saw my set as SFAB where I, I literally set up for a DI trap in order to win the set really efficiently. You also won't win against Fox if you're working so hard for your combo tools only to not kill him. So try to set a DI trap so that it actually kills Fox. And the last thing that I want to really emphasize is that uh, you want to be a mobile waller versus Fox, where like, if you're just really in place, like you just only wall in like one spot, like you spam down tilt or like just spam a fair in place in one spot, Fox is going to pick you apart really easily because your patterns are very noticeable to Fox. Um, Contrast that to just being only mobile, like you're only dash dancing, that also has flaws because then Fox could really... Uh, harass you well with undershoots and overshoot you really easily if all you're doing is just dash dancing and you're just only dash backing like while i if i were to pick the two i would prefer being mobile i think that works out better overall but they both have its own flaws and that's why you gotta incorporate both you gotta be both mobile and wall and a way to kind of intersect these two is jumping like if you were to dash dance jump in place and fair that's like a perfect mix of being mobile and walling at the same time and that in my opinion creates the best value of a lot of interactions of mark versus fox so let's move on to falco it's similar to fox where you gotta edge guard well but specifically you gotta edge guard side b because my god falco side b is incredible like it is faster than fox and if you miss it, it it's a meteor yeah falco's recovery is worse than fox in every way except for one aspect and that's his side b 
And if you are able to train your audio reactions really well against Falco's side B, like you're able to double jab it, you're able to fair, you're able to maybe even like neutral B, you're, and kind of like the final step for me in this matchup is if you could go out there and fair his side B on reaction, you just, you're edge guarding Falco every day of the week. Same concept against Fox, set up DI traps. Uh, it's actually a little, it's like a little different since Falco does weigh a little more, I believe. He at the very minimum falls faster. And those two characters are a little different in some regards, but again, you don't want to fall into the trap. You just up air Falco like 5 million times and he's at 130 and it's like, it's the same issue. So uh, don't let, don't fall for the Mark Dryas trap. Like I, and the last thing you want to do is that you want to limit laser as much as you can. Uh, you know, this could be done through power shields, taking laser really fast, and uh, just threatening the lasers in every way possible. You know, taking laser in the air fair, nearing the laser before the laser could fully come out. Because Falco is kind of not that good of a character if you can't laser. So if you could find methods to force Falco to not laser, or at least very minimum make him afraid to do it, uh, you're in a very great spot. And don't let Falco be comfortable with a laser, and I think that's a great... Like, if you follow these rules, you should be able to deal with Falco well. Uh, against Mark, you know, the Ditto. It is definitely a tough matchup. What you really want to focus on with Mark is that you want to be able to jug, like, be a mobile juggler. Now, what I mean by that is a mistake I notice very often whenever lower level marks try to up throw a mark, they tend to just stay in place and they up tilt and then they get reversal very often because they're just staying in one place. Whereas if you're moving more with your jokes, you're like, you know, you're dash dance, you like you dash and then you jump back in fair, that's going to get you way less likely to get reversal. So when you throw up mark and you just don't stay in place, you're gonna have a lot easier time and get a lot more off of your juggles if you're moving well. While you can't, it's a lot harder to outspace Mart's moves when he's trying to come down, you could at the very minimum move around Mart's moves, and that's how you could juggle Mart a lot more efficiently. Uh, the second step to getting better versus Mart is down tilting his up B, which, uh, if you down tilt his up B in the right spots, there's a lot of specifics like involved around it, but overall, if you're able to uh, down tilt his up B as opposed to Octopher S smash, because Mark can wall tech fair S smash, but if you down tilt it, uh, you're not negative on hit. Like if they wall tech bear instantly, you could walk up and hit that. And if they fast fall up B, you could just keep down tilting. And the important thing is that vertically, Mark cannot sweet spot around down tilt. He can only like try to space horizontally around it, which you which is possible to react and play around. So uh, if you're gonna edge guard up B, down tilt is the way to go. And while it might be a little bit more roundabout, it's a more guaranteed method. Uh, and three. I would say in terms of neutral, uh, it's kind of a, of a mix between zoning and moving because both of these characters would rather want to stay grounded until they are forced to jump. When Marth is grounded, they, they are less vulnerable in many ways. Like they can crouch cancel, they can move and dodge really well, but then when they jump, uh, they do not have access to Crouch Cancel anymore, and they are, if they get hit out of the air, they're kind of screwed. Like, you know, how often have you gone S smashed by the other mark right when you jump? It's not a good feeling. Whereas, like, if you're on the ground, at least you can mitigate it a little. Uh, but sometimes you have to jump because the threat of their zone and moving patterns, like, you know, they might run and cancel down tilt you. They, may, they might way dash down tilt you, so you have to jump at some spot. Uh, so it's really a combination of being able to move, being like making grounded plays well, and zoning well out of it. Uh, but if I have to pick one priority, it would definitely be moving. 
but it's definitely a very complex matchup because you both have the same tools, but at the end of the day, being grounded is generally better than Mark to do. Uh, is kind of like, a, a, if I were to make a quick summary of that point. And the fourth point I'm gonna make here is uh, identify gimmicks. Where uh, it's very common at lower levels where you kind of just get down throw cheese. Uh, I like calling it the denial DI, where you DI in the down throw and you DI down away the F smash. Uh, how often has that happened? Um, and getting up throw up tilted at zero is definitely a gimmick because that's not a true combo at all. Uh, so identifying those gimmicks on where you're getting hit for free and resolving that as quick as possible will do you huge favors in the ditto. So uh, if you follow these rules, I, I think you will do a lot better in the mark ditto. It's time to go over Sheik, where uh, Sheik is definitely one of Mark's harder matchup, and this is the test of if you don't understand these few rules, you're never winning this matchup in my opinion. And the way to win this matchup is by understanding a few key concepts. You need to be able to vertically juggle Sheik. Because if you are not directly below Sheik, you're going to have a way harder time juggling her. This is why FD and Stadium are so strong because of Sheik. Because if you think about it, Sheik has no good hitboxes directly below her. Her dare comes out late, it could easily be crouch cancelled. And fun little fact, it's actually negatively disjointed. Her hurtbox comes out first, then her hitbox. Like, it's not that big, but it's just like an extra insult to injury. So, if you're not juggling by positioning yourself directly below Sheik, uh, you're probably not gonna get very much. And how I would probably get a lot off of Sheik is by doing a shore hop and falling up air. So then, like, pretty much every time your move should win. Uh, if Sheik still has her double jump, then, uh, then you gotta be a little bit more conservative. You wanna switch to being a mobile juggler like I described with Mark, but when she has no double jump, or they, they burn their double jump really early, positioning yourself right below Sheik is, like, a really good way of racking up a lot of damage. Uh, two. Exploit non double jump recoveries. When Sheik has no double jump, her recovery flaw is that she, uh, when the startup of her up B is actually vulnerable. Her, for the most part, her up B is vulnerable except for the startup. So, especially when she has no double jump, there's no reason to just not go out there and just hit her. You know, that's a mistake that... Uh, you know, sometimes I make the mistake of being too conservative of certain edge guards when there's definitely guarantees that I could just go out there and kill her. Uh, because of the startup of her recovery is, is vulnerable. And the third rule that I think is good to keep in mind versus Sheik, and the part where I see a lot of Marts mess up, is that you need to zone oppressively. Uh, I, I see a lot of Marts make the mistake of just uh, dash dancing too much, uh, run up grab. That sort of thing is not zoning oppressively because you're giving Sheik's opportunities to very easily counter hit you. Whereas if you zone oppressively with down tilt in place or like jump fair in place, uh, jump back fair in place, like Sheik's fair cannot beat Marts jump back fair. Uh, Sheik has a lot harder of a time, like, dealing with z zoning oppression than, like, dash dancing. Uh, this is really the matchup where zoning is a lot more rewarded than, uh, dash dancing. And if you, and especially there's some advantage spots where if you know where to place your down tilt and fair, when the Sheik is cornered, for example, you're basically not letting Sheik play the game. A lot of Sheiks like playing versus Mart because they get a lot of free hits and combo trees, but when you know spots where you can zone really oppressively by not letting her play the game, that's when they don't like the matchup anymore. And that's really the rule where if you know spots where essentially not making them play letting them play the game, you're doing you're playing this matchup very well. And if you're able to punish Sheik well through juggles, uh, follow these rules, and you will make Sheik's not like the matchup. 
anymore. And uh, that's really 